I'm sure that they don't need any introduction, but we asked these three to come and speak to you guys tonight because they are the best branded Americans in this business. Um, I'm sure you all know Brandon Phillips, Michael Blair, Chris Campson, who's six holes, and Nick, who's seven. They're going to tell you pretty much everything from how to cultivate a sponsor to how to brand yourself. Cool. Thanks, right. Amanda. Thanks. Uh, what's that? Thanks, Amanda. Yeah. Does anybody, anybody want to introduce themselves? Yeah, sure. All right. I'm Ty McCarty. Nice. I know you. Saw you all day today. Jake's yeah. still <laughs> Izzy. I know her. Yeah. Wes. What's your name? Brian Estrada. Nice. Angela. Cool. And then we are, we've already just met. Cool, man. Nate Ruby. And you're... Zach. Zach. Zev? Zach. Zach. Cool. Right. Anyways, well, thank you guys all for coming out and uh, and listening to our uh, I'm telling you, this is all we gotta do to our speech. But anyways, basically, you know, you guys all are trying to become professional polo players, and uh, you know, polo is definitely it's evolved a lot. It's becoming more mainstream and it's becoming more professional. And you know, times are changing, and you know, there are there aren't a lot of you know back. I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, 20 years ago, there used to be a lot of teams that used to have horses um, where, you know, basically they used to hire young guys like you guys between, you know, the handicap zero to two to three Thank goals you. and you. they mount you guys. And now it's not, it's not really, you know, it's not really like that anymore. You know, the polo has changed a lot and it's really, it's all about, you know, it's all about horses and trying to get yourself, you know, as, as well mounted as possible. And uh, I mean, I think you guys all agree. I mean, I mean, that's the key, honestly. I mean, uh, I know that, like, for me personally, it's changed my life to be doing a young horse program, and it's changed my whole horse situation. Nick doesn't do the young horse program, but he does buy young horses that are started and need right. finishing. So he does that. Whereas, like, I, I, I instead, I, I, w I went to Vicky Armour, and I would basically go in debt and just try to buy the best horses I can buy from her out of her barn. And there's a lot of guys that have done that, and I mean, look at the look at the Tango players and what they do, and try to copy that is the best advice for horse situation. I would I would think. Yeah. And I mean, Ty, you're with Mike. Mike, Mike has always Tangles for 15 years riding Vicky Armour horses. Yeah. Memo Reseda was 25 years riding Vicky Armour horses and buying everything else at the time that he could buy. I mean, right? Well, Brandon and I kind of got our start with Memo. Well, it's not, it's not really who you buy from. I, th I think the, the most important thing that you guys need to think about is that if you guys want to improve in polo and if you guys want to be, if you guys want to get hired for teams, you know, horses is the key. So any, you know, um, you know, all your money that you, that you have, what, whatever money that you guys have, and it doesn't matter if you guys are in debt for the next 10 years. I mean, I have, I did it, I went, did it, Camson did it. Did it. We've all done it where we've, we've owed money but one way or another, you have to build up a string of horses and, you know, you get an old one from one guy, you know, where you say, I'll pay it off in, in a couple of months. I mean, Nikki, you know how it is. It's, uh, you know, you buy one that's maybe, that has an injury that doesn't work for somebody else. You know, you, you have to, you have to, it, it takes a lot of work. You know, it's not just, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, it's not going to be, you know, it's not, and also, you know, you have to be out there as well. You know, you can't just you know sit at your barn and you know you have to be out there socializing, and 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 promoting yourself. Socializing as doesn't mean you have to be at the Mallet Grill until three in the morning with your no, shirt off. No, I'm not. Yeah, you know, like, and we've I done mean, that all too. But yeah, <laughs> but we've done that. And it, it, yeah. it's also hurt our careers very very much. So, but like, I've never done that. All right, because you got married at a really young age. Yeah, like a dumbass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> But anyways, because I, besides being social and then you're meeting people and then <coughs> you, inter you, you have to interact with sponsors, you, you know, you try to go to all the, like the barbecues and all the functions and, and interacting with sponsors and getting people to know you and, you know, you, know, you, you make your contacts and then, you know, the next, you know, that's the way polo works, you know, like, oh, well, I met that kid at a barbecue who's really nice and, you know, See, I like a nice kid, I want to help him. Yeah, I want to like, help like, him. Uh, I mean, I know Jorge, you, you were with Owen last spring, so was Pedro, right? You guys were both with Owen? No, I was with uh, Adam. You were with Adam, you were with Owen, right? Uh, I mean, they've kind of, I mean, not to be a, a jerk or whatever, but like, they're kind of on the downward slope, you know, to like, but it's a great learning experience to be with those guys. Yeah. 
So, I mean, what helped Brandon and myself and Nick was Nick had Pony Express, you know, where he, he was with Balti and Gonzalo Hagee and they kind of helped him come up through the ranks from the, or that's from the outside, no? Yeah. I mean, they took you to seven Wolf. Yeah, what I, yeah. Pony Express, right. right? Yeah. And then, I mean, Brandon teamed up with White Birch, left White Birch to go to Memo. I mean, I, I was a Memo as a kid as well. I was eight years working until I owned my first horse. Right. I started, I mean, I got lucky going in with White Birch as their zero goal player and playing with them for three or four years in the high school and the, the high goal. And, but I had, you know, their horses, their everything. Then went to Memo for another four years of all his operation until I went on my own. And when I went on my own, I was lucky with Memo basically just said, I would got by, I was started at was zero, went through, by the time I finished with Memo, I was four. And he said, all right, here's, he gave me a list of 20 horses he owned. And he said, pick six, there's the prices, pay me when you can. If it's $5 a month, whatever, just send me a check for something each month so you haven't forgotten about me. And he basically handed me one day, gave me six horses and said, go. And I went off to Houston to start playing the pro pool and started like that. I did the exact same thing with Pony Express. It was the same thing, sort of. And, and the reason yeah. to get that is it was eight years of working your ass off, right. being seen, working. Memo had to get to a point. Memo hasn't done that for either. He's done that for his son and for me. And the reason for me was I was there. You, uh, you, had to, you had to build a relationship with the guy. You had to be busting your ass. You were riding 30 horses a day. You were, I went a year and a half of not being able to sleep in past 6 a.m. You were working every single day unless it was a travel day to Europe. So it was, you, you got to get in with someone and you got to earn your, your right for them or they earn yourself so they can say, you know what, I want to help this kid out. I want to give him two horses, three horses, four horses, start them off. I'm going to set them with a sponsor in wherever. I'm you got to find that hope. Unless any of you guys have the financial resources of showing up with a truck, trailer, eight good horses, everything all set up, if you can, great. But the odds are most of you can't, and so you're going to have to go through the working side, and that is pick yourself with somebody. Find somebody that you can mentor under. It's a lot harder for you guys than it was for us now. I mean, to be honest, you guys are, I mean, don't have much of a chance. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's hard. Now, us, we had the big big farms at the time, the late 90s. You had the White Birches, Pegasus, Revlons, Pony Express. You, Blue was like you had teams that had gone. 80, 90 horses that as long as you were good enough as a player, they'd support you. They'd bring you in. You didn't even have to buy your own mallets. I mean, here, just you're playing with us. Now you guys are expected to show up with a field the same as a 10-goal player or an 8-goal player or a 5-goal player is. So you've, it's very difficult for you guys now. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say you... It's tough. You just, you just have to work. You just have to... Honestly, first of all, you have to know you want to do this. If, if, it's, if this is really what you guys want to do and this is like your dreams, great. You have to follow them. But you have to work. It's, it's, it's going to take a lot of work, and it's going to take a lot of, uh, you know, dedication and, and focus. And uh, and I'm and sure you guys not, all have the talent. you're not willing to give up two or three years of your life to be at the barn 6 a.m. every freaking morning. Yeah, I mean, we're we're all human, okay? I mean, we've all ridden sets hungover where you're sleeping like I hate my life. Yeah, but you're still at the barn at 6 a.m. riding a set. I mean, and getting your ass worked because you were. You're there to work. Yeah, there's nothing and wrong with that. Everybody, every, everybody's gone through it. Mariano, all the t most of the top every ten dollars, except the ones that were born into families that have tons of money. And uh, but Mariano Guerra was a great, uh, is a great, um, is a great example. Example. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, he was a groom. He started off as a groom. I mean, I'm the hey. I'm, well, I think Mariano. I mean, Mariano had some Mariano, right. Mariano Aguirre came here as zero guy, goals yeah. with White Birch as their zero goal player, right. and he's never left. Right. He so. spent his whole career with them, and obviously he's 10 goals. Basically, try to find somebody that you guys, you know, make relationships, make contacts, you know, and, and, and try to stick to somebody and, and, and follow in their, in their footsteps and, and help and work as much as possible, be at the barns every day. And like, like, like they said, you know, the, the first year, year or two years, you know, you might not play that much polo, but, you know, you learn all, all you know, polo is not all about getting onto a polo field and going and scoring goals. I mean, there's so much more to it than just getting, arriving to a polo field. I mean, you know, it's, it's all about learning about the horses, learning about maintaining the horses, learning about what they feed, what they eat. I mean, what they, you know, the training. Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and, and th those are all key points to becoming a really good polo player as well. And, um, and you know, I think you guys need to try to focus on that and, and try to look for 
you know, to try the to The sponsors come later. I mean, honestly, like, once you get to a certain handicap, then people want to play with you. But cultivating a sponsor when you're zero to two goals. It's tough. It's not, it's not it's gonna happen. not gonna happen. Unless you're playing in the smallest polo club in the world in God only knows where. Like, I mean, I know Jorge, like you, you came from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Not a beacon of high goal polo. I mean, right. you know? And I mean, you gave lessons and so forth there, right? I mean, you had a better You guys gotta get yourself a pros sponsor. right now. There. Yeah. Then here, here in Palm Beach, the everyone's eyes go googly for Cambiaso and all the Tango players. So I mean, if someone's gonna get a, a spot at a new sponsor in Palm Beach, it's, it's not it's gonna be guys. you guys. It's, it's not gonna be us. us. It's, it's not us. You guys have to tie yourself in with a pro. You have to tie yourself into an organization, to a pro or to a team. And if you're going to that team, my suggestion is if you can get into a, one of the bigger operations and. You start as the groom. You start as they give you an odd horse to stick and ball once in a while. You're shoveling shit for and weeks. You don't kill the horse they give you to stick and ball. When you get, yeah, you that, you have to, you have to He's start with the. Yeah. He still yeah. does that to this day. So I still do the same. Yeah. I own them. <laughs> but you, that's my the best Thanks, advice buddy. I can give you is to get in with the, the the few big teams there are. It's the only thing financially you'll probably be able to do unless again you guys one of you can go or. Get all your own horses and, and go I mean, do if it. You have your own horses and your own rig and your own stuff. But if you want to get in, get into every advantage you have. Some of the richest guys are in polo as, as pros. Paco Narvaez is from a huge rich family. He's got hundreds of horses. I went to Argentina to work for him when I when I was six goals. I went there and I played his his four and five year olds for him at the ranch. And I mean, I had 25 horses that were in my string as four and five year olds. And then he would take them and go play the gold cup or whatever he was playing. And I mean, all I did was go stick a ball all day long. Nick and I got the chance when we were three goals to go to Bouties. And I was three goals. He was five, just, you know, lost the final deal with Bouties. We went there that fall. And we worked for Bouties every day, riding yeah. 15 horses a day each. And like, like grunts, grooms in Argentina running around trying to shave your head every day while you're trying to stick a ball and work. I mean, it's like... But that's where you like Argent time. Argentina also is, is, I mean, if any of you guys can get the chance to go to Argentina and to play with any of, you know... I mean, a lot of these big Argentine guys, they have so many horses that they need people to go. And if you can make a contact through one of them, you know, I, that's... You're not going to make if you want to be, doing it, yeah. just say, hey, listen, I'll work for you. Save money to buy your own plane ticket if you have to. And then once you're there, just be like, all right, give me a place to live and let me ride every day. Do whatever that takes. I mean, Nick, you've gone to Argentina, right? Yeah. You worked your ass off. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's what has to happen to try to get better. It's what has to happen. And you first sure have you to guys, That's all what you guys want to do. I mean, it's a, you know, right? I mean, you guys all want to be, strive to become you know, good polo players, right? I mean, if any of yeah. you do have the advantage financially from your parents to back you, take it. Take it. That's how you're going to get good. Do anything you can. Take it and run. If you first got to, you guys got to ask yourself never, now. Never be ashamed that your parents can help you out, ever, in getting to be a good polo player, if they can. You guys got to figure out now if this is really what you want. Are you here because this is the end all of your life that you want to be a polo player and this is what you want to do? Are you here because it, it just looks kind of cool and Palm Beach is cool and you're trying to pick up chicks and maybe a polo would be a good place to start? You like the idea? Are you really wanting to put in the time? Are you going to go behind the scenes and do everything you need to do? Because if you're not 100% into it, you're wasting your time, the guy next to you's time, our time. It's too tough now. It's not just you're not just going to get lucky. You're going to have to bust your ass. Yep. And if you want to do it, great. But really think. I mean, where are you in life? Do you have an education yet? Are you able to do something else if this falls through? You know, you got to think of the big picture. It's not all you, there's no one besides Wesley that's really young. I mean, you guys are all, I'm assuming, 19 and up, correct? You already missed the cut. I mean, you see there's 16, 17 year olds, uh, Argentines that are four, five, six, seven goals. I mean, you guys already are coming in late. So you got to really. For example, let me just stop real quick. This kid at 17 years old was. Five? Three goals read. Uh, at 17? Seven. Seven goals seven, at 17? Six. Seven. Six Somewhere goals. There. Whatever, it doesn't, whatever. I mean, Brandon at 17? I was only zero, but... Um, he was zero, but he was with White Birch playing the 26. Playing the open of them. But I mean, at, at 17, I was four. You know, I mean, it's... Ben. You, you guys have missed the cut, to be point, honest with you. You're already point, too old. You're going to have to make so a it's, huge jump in the next couple of years. 
or say I'm going to use my polo to get an education, to get a college scholarship, to do something, and then come and back. And polo will do that as well. I mean, you'll, you'll learn like through the ropes, through like meeting sponsors and working out your deals and stuff like that. Like you know, like uh, I don't have a. I mean, I pretty much I left high school, and I mean, I don't even think I finished high school. But that, don't even not, think. <laughs> Nick, but, Nick, Nick, but you're, you're a completely different example. But whatever, what I'm you saying is... You seven goals with, with No, I know, a, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that, like... I mean, like that, you, take you, Nick you, apart, okay? Nick is, like, one of the... He's a freak, and that's how he is. I mean, he's a freak. He was dude, he was 15, went from zero to three before he could drive. I know, because I was driving him around. <laughs> you know, like, and, I mean... But not not to discourage you guys. Don't not that it can't never, be never done. We're trying to be like a, we're not trying to. Be but you gotta. Like, oh, you're never gonna be like like us. No, because a lot of you probably have more talent than we ever had. Right. It's just, it's just a matter of dedication. It just it just it just you gotta you gotta you gotta know 100 percent this is what you wanna do and you gotta go for it. And I think you, I mean I, there's no reason why any of you guys should do. I'm sure you guys all have the same talent as, as we do. So um, it's just a matter of and like. Working your angles. I mean, you know, you're you're doing well, dude. You, I mean, you're you're playing with you know Alegria. I mean, last year you played with Bendabout. I mean, you know, slowly but surely you're you're getting there, and you're playing fucking super well. You know, Tyler and I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. So the, the, you know, there will be opportunities. You know, it's just a mat. It's just don't think the opportunities are gonna come to you. You got to chase those opportunities. You need to go to them. You know, you need to just. And remember, I said a few of you said a few of you guys the other day, your opportunities. You got a window this big when you're down here. You get a chance to play. You get a chance to stick and ball. You get a chance to do anything. Especially being here in Wellington, there's always eyes on you. Good or bad, you make you have to make the best out of every situation yeah. you're in. You get one horse to stick and ball. We'll do it properly. Ride the horse well. Hit the ball. We'll concentrate because you never know who's in the trees and the bushes. Whoever's watching you, there's always somebody watching you. It's a small and, world, Paul is a very small world, and, and, and that's everyone, you've discovered. Everyone knows everything about everything, so. I know a kid, White Birch, even tried out because we were sitting there at halftime, and this kid was with a foot mallet in New York doing unbelievable things with a foot mallet. This kid all next thing you know, Mariano comes up to him at halftime and says, come to the barn tomorrow, we want to try you out for Florida. Okay, you put the kid on a horse, he sucked, but he got an opportunity. Right. Just by a stupid thing what he does with a foot mallet. So there's always somebody watching you. With a foot mallet, on a horse, cleaning stalls. Do we like the guy? Do we see him at night? Is he a drunk? Is he fun? Is he smart? Everything you do from outside the barn, inside the barn, here, Sunday nights, whatever you do, somebody's watching you. So you have to, you're, you guys are here to impress. So you really got to be smart about what you do and how you do things. And hopefully you get that brief 20-minute slot that somebody sees you and you, you yep. can get picked up. And I mean, if you work hard enough, it'll happen. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll get that. Just be 100 Getting jobs, 60% of it is on your ability. 40% of it is the person you are. Right. So Remember, in, po in, in Polo, in the United States, in England, like the owner of the team actually plays on the team. So a lot of sponsors, aren't, they're not all about how great you are. Or, you know, they want, they want, sometimes they want to hire a good guy who's a nice guy, who's sociable, who is, fun, you know, you can go to dinner and have normal conversation with them, you know, and, and, and you know, so um, obviously talent and, ho and horses, that all come, I mean, that's, it's important, but remember to all, to be... You, all, you may get your break by talking to a guy at a, at a sitting at polo at halftime, talking to someone, one of the sponsors, somehow someone sees you and you're talking to them and they like you, and just by liking you and what you had to say, sure, come to my barn tomorrow. Let's see what you got. Right. And you'll get opportunities that way as well. And I mean, so you, it's it's very important to be all angles. Because you guys, if you're going to be an asshole, you better be 10 goals. And if you guys aren't going to be 10 goals, which I'm sorry, there's odds of probably you guys aren't going to be 10 goals, you got to use your off field, your social skills to get there, to get people to like you, give you opportunities. and and want you around them, their family, their kids, their horses, their organization. So it's That's very, very important, important as well in Polo. Very important. And yeah. if, as we had, they say about contracts. To be honest, at any level, a contract, okay, it's great to just kind of say for details. You know, we put down who's paying the feed, who's paying this, just kind of what you have to cover, what the sponsor has to cover. That's not bad to have down in writing. Bottom line is, you get a deposit, you will make a deal. You get their cash. Sponsors will Always. renege on contracts Always. whenever they feel like it. 
You say, Always. oh, it's a legal contract. Well, you go, we're having a, I have a, if I have a problem with some millionaire and, okay, he just walked away in a contract, he's going to go drag it out in court. I'll be broke by the time we even get to it. Contracts mean nothing to these guys. You have to remember, get their money. If it's $10 as a deposit, if it's $1,000, you have their money in your hand, they will stay with their, with their deal. And if worst case happens, they don't, you just you got free money. money. Yeah. Contracts are, to me, uh, kind of crap. There, half there's of them. been a few guys I've done written contracts with in my polar career, and I mean, just ask for a deposit. It's because of them. You I get mean, their money, it's you're... It's because the sponsor said, hey, I have to do this for my company or whatever I'm going to pay you through. Uh, just sign this thing and all it is is a clarification. Fine. 99% of the time, all it is is an email or a text of, right. hey, here's my wire instructions. I mean, that's pretty much my only contracts I ever do. Or Paul still hasn't gone that professional. And I really don't think... It will unless we bring corporate sponsorship. Unless it gets into, on TV. In, yeah. First of all, on TV if it, once, to bring if, corporate if, in. If and when or if it ever does, Polo. I mean, the only way that Polo would really explode is if we if, if we get it televised on any of the big on, the, on any of the big. When channels. you get it televised, you bring in the corporate sponsors the corporate and the corporate sponsors, sponsors right. and now we start having Which is four what, pro teams. What, what we're trying to do. I mean, we've already, you know, we've we've already been working with a lot of corporate sponsors. You know, Piaget is. Has done a lot for Polo, and they're thinking about you know sponsoring you know full teams, and we have a bunch of other corporate sponsors. I mean, the three Ferrari, of us have worked together yeah. at this tireless. Years. We've been doing this for two years now, and it takes a lot of work, and a lot of convincing, and you know. It's, no one wants to be the first one, so right, it's tough to get ready. that first. I mean, we're close. We're really, really close. I mean, you know, Polo has become, especially in the last two years, with you know, with the thanks to Nacho Figueres and Ralph Lauren and. You know, now Piaget has sort of jumped on board and there's a, there's a couple of car companies like Audi and I think maybe, we, you know, there's other, there's, we have, there's a lot of other, there's, there's good. The Espresso did a team one year for me in Miami, you know, with Nacho. Right, Greg, I mean, there's. I played with Isabella. I mean, right. they, they, they helped us Things out are happening and, and, and I think, and like I think Polo will become a lot more mainstream just because sort of the feedback I'm getting from the public. I mean, people love the sport and they think it's unbelievable and just nobody really knows anything about it. It's, it's such a, you know, no one is educated. No one is educated. No one has a clue about the sport. So they're like, and also they think that it's pretty, it's like sort of the sport. It's the elite sport that no one can go to get involved with. And from you know? a professional standpoint, why we'd want for us to benefit us for corporate sponsors is for security for one. Because as it stands now, these great people, these great sponsors that we play for, we are their fun money. We are their extracurricular activity. We're, their, we're in their toy box. And when they have the extra money and everything's going great, everything's great. One thing goes wrong in their personal life, their business, their something. First thing they cut out is their extracurricular activities, which is polo, which is us. Mm -hmm. So you never know. You could have a contract for 10 years. You could have everything. And next thing you know, the guy's stock goes to crap the next day. And right. sorry, I can't play polo with you anymore. And it's happened to many people. And it's, it's happened, happened to all, all of us is... 10 times over. Yeah. So we have no security in the sport with the sponsors. No matter as great people as they can be, as right. they'll tell you that you're going to be with them for life, stuff happens in their world that they can't control, but, but sorry guys, you know, Polo's on the back burner for a while. So that's why bringing in corporate, just like any professional sport would have, you have a three-year deal and you're pretty safe when Piaget or Ferrari says, you know what, we want to do this for three years. You sign the contract with them, you know for three years you're getting a paycheck. So that's, for, as a professional on the side of it, that's why we'd want to bring them in is just so you can make those long-term contracts and, and be safe with it. Because it, it's, it's rare in Polo you see a guy play with the team for a while. I mean, most teams... White are, Birch was really the only... Mariana Nagata is the only guy that's been with the team for 20 years. And that's the funny thing. Peter Brandt, you, everyone said how many things. He's this, he's that. He's the most loyal guy there is. Right. I mean, when you start with White Birch and you do your job with White Birch, you don't leave White Birch. If you Bob leave, Daniels it's on your own class. Bob... Yeah. Always with Hagee. Bob's been There's playing, with you know, Bob and Daniels have been playing Pygo Polo for 30 years and has always had one of the Hagees. He's, you know, he's always been a loyal guy. He may not have, you know, been the biggest sponsor, but he's always been there. And, um, yeah. But remember that with these sponsors, it's, it's, 
It's because of them that we're we're here. Yeah, you know, you have to well, respect them. Everything you do, respect them. Respect them. You know, know that you're you're. I mean, treat them like they want. They don't don't treat them like they're like. You know, they want to be treated like normal people as well. You know, they you know so. Don't don't feel like you have to go and but they're try. Also, to... you're they're also your living, so you, you you can't like go look at the guy and uh, he misses a back shot and go. You saw... I'm gonna kill you. You know, like because no. Campson's never done that before. Never, um, never. Remember, you are always disposable. All we yeah, are all disposable to these all guys. Disposable. Let me yeah. Tell you. So you. You're like a peanut pot. No, they at any time, any moment. You're, you could be gone. No matter what they say the night before, the next morning things could change. So that's your security. You have to have yourself, your own little circle of whatever you do put around you secure because you might get a one month contract with this guy and in two weeks his stock goes and sorry, we're supposed to play the whole month, but no, after two weeks you're done. You're not getting paid. You're not getting, I mean, you're going to get screwed. At some point, if you haven't already, you will get screwed 10 times over. I, it's I, a, I, it's I, the I nature of the sport. I got my Aiken one year. I got my deposit. I got to Aiken. My sponsor's horses didn't arrive. I was with Mike Azaro and Tommy Biddle. We're like, okay, maybe the guy's just, you know, plans last minute, this and that. Hey, that entry fee check didn't come. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll FedEx it to you. Didn't come, didn't come. I mean, things didn't come. We all had our deposits. Lawyers were starting to get involved. Like, like if you don't play, you're gonna have to get the money back. You know, these kind of things. I mean, so we played. And I'm still owed money from the thing. Mike Zaro still owed money from the thing. Tommy Biddle still owed money from the thing. The guy paid us like one tenth of what we were supposed to get paid. We got our deposits. And if we quote didn't play, we were gonna have to give that back because it was like kind of a failure to perform on our parts. And the guy could have sued us to get our money back. So we had to play, and then now it's one of those things the guy all of a sudden he sends me a text like out of the out of the blue at like two in the morning and then he's like, Hey, I'll have a check next Wednesday for you. And you're like, Oh, really? The next morning you reply, Sounds great. <laughs> you know, I mean, what am I gonna do? Tell the guy to go fuck himself? I mean, yeah, I want to. But I can't. Because no, you don't want to the dream bridges. the dream that this guy's gonna get his money someday. That's the thing, you're gonna when you get screwed, you're basically you gotta take it. Because you never know, as many times as you want to go back to the guy and just say you are blah blah blah, you never know, two months later, a year later, this guy comes back around again and he's hit the big jackpot that time and he wants you again and he remembers that you helped him out. Right. You have to just keep your mouth shut, you walk away and you're fine. You learn from that, but you just, you never, you don't burn bridges. You never know when it's going to come back around and you'll benefit from this person another time. So you, you're going to get it, and you're going to have to take it, receive it, take your licks, and, and then that's it. Because also, too, you go blast one of these sponsors, it's an ego thing for them. And they're going to go badmouth you to another sponsor. Oh, this kid, he just blasted me. He's this, he's that, regardless if you were in the right or wrong. You, and Polo is so small, you can't get a bad reputation in any way. You can't get it. You, one bad thing comes out, it'll, it'll take you years to, to overcome that. And especially if you're not going to be 10 goals, your reputation is super important. There are 10 goal players that couldn't get jobs because of reputation, right. maybe one. But right. it was, two. maybe two. Yeah. But it was, yeah. you, you gotta just keep your mouth shut, a lot of it. You can't go punch a wall, go do whatever you're gonna do in your home, but you're gonna have to take it. And it sucks, because you wanna just go back at them and say you're this and this, and you, you went back on that, and you went back, you can't. And we've done that, we've been quiet about it, and yes, maybe two years later this guy comes back around and we're playing the high goal with him again. It's Don't a job. Burn bridges. You do not burn bridges at any point. Yeah. Um, as much as you want to, don't do it is the best advice because it'll, it'll benefit at some point, it'll come around. Does anyone have any questions or? Isabella had a couple <laughs> questions earlier. Yep. Yes. I think Would you did. like to stand up and say your questions? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, really, you know, just stand on the chair. I was at my barn today. We, we have a very long report. She had a couple questions she wanted to address this evening. <laughs> just stand on the chair and speak. Can you please stand up and... Uh, could you stand up and address these questions address to Brandon questions and Nick as too. well? So they could answer these. These were great questions. Are you blushing? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll think of a minute. Can you can go around and then and then I'll Ty, Ty can sure ask a question. No, I mean you guys already answered them all. Like the jobs that I've had and the jobs that I'm getting are through friendships rather than friendships, man. Ability. Look, like, great, I, great, great, like great thing. Like uh, Argentine, like 
look, 98% of the pole players are Argentines, right? Some are, are most of the, of the top ones, right? Yeah. And the way that it goes with them is, you know, it's, you know, I have a cousin, or I, they, they, they they hire between their family, their cousins, and their friends. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's the way it goes. So there's no like reason us. why the United States, why, why we don't do that, you know? I mean, in the United I mean, States, nobody does that. No, you know? like, I was in Aiken, and I was just, I was playing Aiken with this one, my friend, his dad was just fitting the bill for the entire team, and I had a wreck and whatever, was out for a while, and then came back and was playing horribly, but they stuck with me because I'm his friend. Now. Right. And, I mean, yeah. as long as you're, as you're, if you're hardworking and you're, you're loyal and like you, you're, you're a good guy. Yeah. I mean, you just go to dinners and you. Yeah. You, I mean, you have to, you have to be a good person. Yep. You have to. That's that's Absolutely. what I found is half yeah, of it. Yeah. For know? sure, dude. Yeah. And then the horses, like you said, like the horses. horses. Are, the horses. I mean, that riding, dude, that is the biggest. The horses that I'm riding from Vicky Armour, like you, you're saying, are thirty thousand dollar horses that he buys a year and a half. I mean, for thirty thousand dollars, they're not even made. I mean, but these things are natural athletes. Right. These things are machines. And that's where you gotta sell. You gotta, you gotta risk. I found that you know I haven't had contracts which have came back and you know kind of bit me in the butt, but. You got, sometimes like you have to make deals without contracts because you. I feel like sometimes I screw up deals by saying like, no, I need this much money, this much stuff. Oh no, we don't want you. We'll go find another kid. Right. But if you go in without a contract and work hard and play hard and whatever, and look good, then they're, it's going to be rewarding. They're going to hire you again. They're going to whatever. Yeah. I mean, as whatever, far as like pricing and stuff like that, ever uh, we always want to get the most we ever can get. And there's one thing Carlos Garcia told me. He goes, when they want you, they'll pay anything. Yeah. When they don't want you, you can go for free, and they still won't take you. He goes, right. so when you price yourself, just know that if they really want you, they're going to pay for you. If they don't want you, that's, that's like it some, doesn't that's like matter if you said, I'll go for free. That's, that's kind of a question I have is like, I, I guess I don't really understand how to price myself, you know what I mean? Like the only deals I've had are just whatever, I just go and work and play as hard as I can. And look well, you got to you can, you you get the handicap for you. Well, I was zero. Are you also, zero? But now I'm one. Expenses, because there's one goal guys that are sponsors. You know what they respect? You do this. You tell them <clears throat> they can get you. You know, obviously get your expenses, and explain. Be completely truthful. I want to come play. I'm going to kill myself for you. I can't afford to float my own bill. I'm trying to make money to buy horses. Yeah. Somehow to get horses. Let's say I'm going to go for expenses. Play this. Maybe they have a horse, and maybe, and maybe, maybe they say horse, to get a horse, yeah, just yeah, so it doesn't exactly. cost you money to play. An old that's horse, fine. a horse that has a, an injury. Well, yeah, but sure maybe you leave it's instead of leaving with like, money, you leave with a horse. Well, there, you've, that's one stepping stone. Is his name Horizon, by the way? <laughs> Horizon is dead. Yeah, Horizon's dead. Horizon died. Well, yeah, died last year. Well, at that time. Heart heart died. Oh, that's awesome. Anyone else have any thing there? Questions? What do you guys think? What are you? What are your guys' plans this season? What are you, you're here after this week? What are you? You're here all season. You're working for someone. You're on your own. You're. Yeah, and go around. What is everybody doing? What are your plans? We're working for Julio. Yeah. Cool. Good. That's good. A good person Very to work good. for. He Jake, we know where you're at. We know where you're at. We know where you're at. You're everywhere. Is he at school? Wes, what are you doing? Yeah. Practice. Practice. You've got your own horses here, right? Great. You're trying to play. You got some leagues. Are you a uh, backup for any of the sponsors or anything? That's another thing. Go, go to this. We all did this too. Go if you're zero one goal. Go look at every sponsor that's playing the high goal right now. Go to their manager and say, when your sponsor doesn't play, if he gets hurt, who can you know? Do you have someone to replace him? Go that's and be their backup. That was a polo, not just in the high goal. Yeah. Go to the, the four goal, the eight anything. goal. Go in and you say you back up because yeah. what will happen if they do want you, they're going to have practice. Come to practices and play. Okay, it's eight chucker practice. Sponsor is going to play six chuckers. Maybe you play the last two chuckers. See, it'll get your pole and get a relationship with these big sponsors, the big teams. Man, go it doesn't to, have to be big teams, I, any team. I was two goals. Steve Van Andel was two goals one year. And Julio Ariano hit him in the eye. Couldn't play the open. So I got to play the gold, the rest of the gold cup. And then we started the open, and then somebody else. Got I was a backup for Tim Gannon when I, I mean, was zero. I mean, you just guys, and you get to ride horses know. that you'll never be able to afford to buy. I mean, that's the idea, right? These sponsors that, that play, they're they're buying horses for a hundred thousand dollars, eighty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars, and they're buying not one; they're buying a whole string of them. 
So you get to ride horses that are, I mean, are so far beyond what your capabilities are on a, on a 26 goal field at zero or two goals. That I mean, it's. But go and talk to those teams. Tell them you want to. You'll be there. You know, then at least they'll give you a shot to say, well, let's see if this kid can hit a ball at least. Maybe you'll get to stick and ball, and they'll say, ah, you're good, okay, maybe he's coming around. Dude, Nick, you're, you're a great example, dude. I mean, when did you, 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 I mean, you went to school, you finished, high, you finished college, and you said, hey, I want to start playing polo. Look at you now. I mean, you're playing 14, you're playing on, with Pony Express in the 20. I mean, you've got a string of 10 horses. One I mean, from you, one well, from you. but it like, but, but yeah, see, I, whatever. But that, that's how it works out, no? I mean, you know, you get a horse here, you pick, you get a horse here, you sort of build up a string, and I mean, Right? Yeah. Piece it together. Yeah, it takes a long time. It takes a long it's, time, right? I mean, I'm not even close. I'm like you, you went yeah, to but college, dude, right? but you're, you're, Like you finished, yeah. you finished college. Yeah. So you started at 22, 23. 24 when I was playing first time polo. But you were always playing polo, but, but in the summer. right. But like, I mean, you, you're really sort of piecing your string together at 24, yeah, yeah. Right. 23, 24. Okay. Yeah. I mean, man, and it, it's a yeah, it's tough. procedure. It's, it's, it is. I mean, it's. But you're look now you're playing. I mean you're you're playing what you want to be playing, dude. Yep. And you get the opportunities. I mean, that you're gonna play the twenty this year. You're right. The fourteens now. You have played six. I mean you've played everywhere. So. What are you guys playing? I'm in school right now. You are. And, uh, I'm trying to play something for the summertime. Yeah. I'm playing a lot of local stuff right now. I'm trying to uh, get opportunities and move up there. Right. Where are you in college? Yeah, I'm in college. Right yeah. Now. Through polo? Like college? Well, I'm not playing polo right now in college. I'm playing to transfer to Cornell next year. That's cool. great. And play there, so, um, but I'm trying to. Where do you spend your summers? Well, I've been playing up in the Northeast. Um, okay. Near Saratoga and uh, up in um, up, upstate New York. Who's who's in Saratoga that, I mean, isn't Govin or any of those guys that. Ricky like, Boswick. How many goals are you? Yeah, yeah you, you need to go and you need to. Investigate, you know, go and, and, and do some homework who's, as to who's, who's around there and say, hey, look, pay my expenses. I'll come and I'll ride horses. I'll stick them all. I'll, you know. Give me a place to live. People, guys are always looking for, for, for pilots, you know, for work, for, for helpers, yeah. you know. And, or uh, Mishomik. I mean, uh, yeah, I've been over here in Mishomik as well, um, just riding and stuff. And because uh, I was living in Connecticut, I was sticking ball over Mishomik. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm just trying to get the opportunity and like, go from there. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah. I mean, even, even if like one of us is in Greenwich and we need, you know, and we can only send sure. one guy, it's, if we can send one guy and you get one of these guys, I mean, it's, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, there's. What would you guys think, like? No, no, I'm not taking you. Uh, no, what, what do you think about, like, there's a lot of kids that just focus playing low goal polo, and I think it's better to to sacrifice that low goal stuff and work for a high goal player, you know, like like you're saying, you know, because, I mean, I don't know if that's some advice you want to give these guys, like, the, the low, playing two and four and six and eight, that, that's Well, I'm great. just saying, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You, you got to do it. it. You, you, you got to do it, but if you get an opportunity to go in with a high goal player, go. Yeah, right. because at least don't, don't take the money at the four goal. Go with the high goal player. The high goal. Right. And if it's free, if, if you're the right person and you're with the right, the guy's gonna pay you. At least pay you a groom you. salary. Oh, yeah. Give you. Yeah, they're gonna pay you. And if you're going as a groom, but yeah. you're at least put in front of people. He'll have you there. You'll be at the games. You'll be in Palm Beach. You'll be in Santa Barbara. You'll be in the Hamptons. You'll be where the big guns are and you may, you know you might get that break you might get the stick and ball the practice this guy gets hurt Dude, a small, ambulance a small chase hurt do whatever you, you, you guys are there yeah you I know mean, and you so. have that one opportunity you play well and then everyone's like oh shit thanks last year Wes Fiddleston well. got to fill in with with Circa in the 16 goal played against me I mean the kid was zero goals ate your lunch yeah kicked your ass yeah ate my lunch the kid scored like four goals that game I mean I, your mom was there you were there he's one of your best friends I mean he got, he got the opportunity why because he went Talked to Martin Peppa, did the this, did the that, and got the opportunity. You know, I mean, he, they, he found them, and they, they needed somebody to fill in for Chris. That's a huge that's a huge jump start for a kid. You go, well, a lot of us did too with these, the high goal teams, and you say, either you're getting in as the backup or the sponsor, go hold a spare for them. Start being friends with the manager. Like, talk yeah. with them. Let them know who you are. I held Brandon's spare. He held my spare. He was horrible at it, but he held my spare. But you go in and, and you you just make relationships with all these teams. I didn't teams. Say you get to tear when you held the spare. <laughs> I just said you had to go do it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but it's uh, that's another way of, you know, instead of just going cold turkey up, you know, knocking on the door saying, hi, I'm here, can you hire me? So listen, you need to spare help, you know. So, yeah, who are you? Okay, well, I'm one goal, and I'd like to, you know, I'm trying to break in. Tell them, be honest. Yeah. Sure, kid, come here. Tell your deal. Here's Tell 50 exactly bucks, hold a spare. The you They're going to pay you to hold a spare. Yeah, you're not no, doing it for free. Just... Okay, thanks for holding the spare today. See you later. But you, there's your person, person yeah. skills come in and start talking with these right. people. <laughs> so you just pour half out and hand you the rest, you know? No, I mean, they're going to pay you for it too. So, I mean, just be out there, be personal, we'll talk to them. Chris, what do you guys think about, there's a few people in here, their one goal, two goals have strings. Do they just keep clawing it out at, as, you know, with their string? I mean, you know it outweighs what they're getting paid. I yeah. You got it. I mean, if you have the opportunity right now to actually own horses, I mean, do whatever it takes. So you're suggesting, like, if you have a string, like I have a string of horses, go and play. You know, like I played eight goal polo all summer and didn't learn a thing, but I played and I got paid for it, but I didn't learn one thing. And then now I don't have any horses here and I'm working for my gazar and I'm learning, I'm improving. So I'm saying, you, when you have horses, opportunities arise. Like, uh, I was talking to another another young kid today, and, and I mean, he wanted to come down here and work, or he could stay in Aiken this 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 winter and you know play green horse targets as I said, man, stay and play. Yeah. You have to play. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there has to be a chance if you own horses, physically own horses, and they're yours. Man, I, I think for me, you have to play. Do you guys Where sell you your best horse? I disagree. Yeah, I want to hear everybody's side on that. I, that's a tough one. What was that? Depends on yeah. I mean, it depends on who's actually really yeah. Two and three yeah, you sell your best horse, and then you go and you buy three more. And you pray that one of them help, works out. If you only, I'd, that's what you. I mean, but I had three horses I had from Canada and came down here and sold them and turned the three into four, and then you you start to turn. And then you you can do it that way. But I actually disagree with you. And if you have, regardless, if you have you have your string of horses, if you get an opportunity to get into a high goal scene or into with a professional player, use that person as your vehicle now to get into the higher level of polo. You're gonna not only learn more, you'll get more opportunities, I think, being in that organization or being with that player, if you're with the right, if you're with the right player, then yes, playing in Buttfart, Idaho and eight horses and trying to kill it and no one sees you and no one knows and you had vet bills and you had... Yeah, I played butt for Idaho. It's kind of nice. <laughs> but I it's... Mean, I don't know. I mean, Jake, Jake, you have four of your own horses here, right? If you get the opportunity with the big guys and all of a sudden you're, you're, it's time for you to play, you say, well, okay, I do have some horses I could bring. Okay, bring your best three. And now we'll start that way once you get the job. But it's too expensive to be carrying eight, nine horses to get paid nothing to maybe I get seen in a two goal. If... if you have the opportunity and get with the right people, I'd say do that. Because that, that puts you already up here with zero expenses and you're learning the, from the best, watching the best, being around the best, and that's where you want to start. It's tough to start a two goal playing and then all of a sudden, oh, I got a job at the eight goal and then the 16 goal. And it's very tough it's for that to happen. If you have someone else helping to pay for your horse expenses, like I think Team USPA does something. Well, yeah, you if you don't have the expenses, if keep them going. Expenses, but who doesn't have expenses? If you get, if you have outside help, take it. Yeah. If you have somebody that's willing to pay your horse expenses here to, to do something, and you got to play a four goal on Fridays, yeah. We saw says, take care of your horses for the a good example is Mason Rowe. He, Mason Rowe came here the first year, didn't bring a horse, and worked and bum rides and got you know played horses practices for this guy. And here's a group of he played for me a few practices. I gave him a group of horses and. When with uh, Golf Street, he got seen just practicing other people's horses. He had no expenses. Then, see, well, that kid's a nice kid, talking to everyone, okay. What are you doing this spring? Then he gets, okay, let's go to Houston. That's all he, this kid was good. Bring your horses to Houston. Now, then he brought, when he has a deal, he brings his horses. Two years later, now he's playing the high goal and he's got his horses here and he's going. But that first year, he just came down here and worked and kind of ma made his you know decisions. Come down here first cold turkey with eight horses, no, no, I mean, that, You're done. That, that, that's a scenario, like, if, if you are getting paid and you can afford to do it, do it. If you cannot afford to have the eight horses in Florida and you're not, you don't have a deal set and you have nothing set, 
obviously don't be stupid because you're going to run up 30000 or 40000 or $50,000 in bills. Yeah. And you're going to be paying that all summer playing in, you know, Idaho. <laughs> Butt fart Idaho. Butt fart Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, obviously use your head. I mean, don't don't say, oh, I'm going to Florida. I'm going to. I think if you if, if you have the opportunity to work under somebody that's you know that's already established and is in a big organization, take it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and, uh, and 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 you sort of sacrifice two years and then say, I'm going to work my ass off under this guy, and I'm going to show him, and I'm going to you know, and there's, you're you're always going to have chances. <clears throat> you're always going to have chances to stick a ball and ride, and you're sometimes you're going to have chances to play practice and stuff like that. And sometimes the sponsor is going to hurt. So somebody's going to get hurt. So the opportunities are going to arise. Honestly, if you're there, you're going to get opportunities to play. If you're there, you're, you're there hungry. You, the you, if, if you really are guys. there and we're willing, you're hungry. People see it, you know. They, and they'll they'll notice if say, if you know if well, there's a practice and you're I don't know they're fiddling you know or talking to some chick or something like. You know, yeah, you're standing around on the side with with my 53 going teak, teak, But if you're there, like watching, sort of like listening, groom, so and, and like the next time I come back, I'm gonna be pissed. Another example this year, there's uh, Rob Stenzel, who's Todd Offen's nephew, is down here working with us. He's Canadian, so he has the wrong passport to be hanging out with you guys. But he <laughs> is working with us for free. We're giving him horses. I got him an eight goal deal. They're not even paying him for the eight goal. We're giving him horses to do this. I have him being, you know, a little pilot helping me with extra horses, and we're sticking balling, and Jeff Hall comes by. Oh, geez, I had 10 horses to ride. I've got all these extra horses. My groom's hurt. I said, Rob, he's here. Next thing you know, now Jeff's giving Rob four horses to go play in his eight goal Sunday because he has right. an extra. Rob's not making a dollar, but he's here well, he's on made, horses, he's, I mean, making made, connections. Yeah. People now are giving, he's a good rider, giving him horses. He's now being seen playing in tournament polo, and it's a way of, of building yourself. So, you know, he's. Fudging his way through, and you know, not. But again, that's just from being seen. He comes and rides with me. Another guy sees him. Hey, can I use him? Sure, use Rob. And now he just got another deal just by going out and riding with one other guy. So that's what I mean. Why every someone's always watching you when you're on a horse. He, he liked the way Rob rode. He goes, "Can you come ride some of my horses?" Sure, take them. So it's it's very important to be, like I said from the beginning, be every time you have an opportunity on a horse or anywhere to be, be on. Point, I guess, be ready. You had a question? No, Did you, you remember it? Yeah. You, just, you just winked at me and told me you had a question. Oh, yeah. I just winked at you. Uh, All right. Well, Izzy, Izzy got camera shy, so. Yeah. Yeah. Can we turn the cameras off for one second? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know, man. I think, that, I think that's pretty much, I mean, it's all about how hungry and how dedicated you guys want to be. You know? I think life is you guys control your own destinies, just work hard and you guys will get the chances. And I'm sure you guys all have the talent to do it, so I would go for it. Or not. <laughs> hey, just make your decision now. Huh? Yeah, make right. your decision now. Be like, yeah. Right. Like, no. Go for it, Either go for, go for it or go do something else. Yeah. Or I mean, do, or, or yeah. use polo to go get a scholarship, uh, scholarship to school. Yeah. I mean, do whatever it takes. I mean, if, you, if you're saying, ah, uh, you know what, I tried that working thing, it really didn't help me. I wasn't, no, 6 a.m. sucks. Fine. But don't, don't beat around the bush. Or you can, you can fall back now. Maybe you want to be a team manager. Maybe you want to just do, maybe you're you a make, great rider, you want to horse. make I mean, horses. All, those are all, you know. Not everyone's maybe got the drive to go be uh, Sunday at three o'clock in the 26 goal or 22 goal. They were they want to. There's other. There's a lot of avenues you can do in polo. It's not right. just being out there in the center field. And you can make a lot of money and make a very good living doing other things right. around polo as well. So and maybe you that's really something you love. You love horses to. and you love the lifestyle and you love everything about the sport. Then you know continue and you know and strive to become a pole player or, you know, there's a, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of other avenues, you know, there's a lot of other options to do as well, so. Uh, so. Thanks, you guys. Yep. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah.